Now, till now, we have seen two positions of a moving plane. What, are, what is this? First, we said, according to Shaw theorem, any the motion from one position to another in plane motion, simply accused by a P rotation about the pole P12, uh, that pole is determined by the intersection of the perpendicular bisectors of two uh, pairs of homologous points. And the angular rotation between those two points will be, the two positions will be five on two. That's the basis, that's the, the uh, starting point. From which we said, okay, uh, you can design a rotation to move a rigid body from one position to another, simply attach a revolute joint at P12 and rotate the rigid body. <coughs> But this is not possible all the time, and it's a single unique solution. It may not satisfy all the requirements. Next, we said, okay, instead of performing this motion by pure rotation, we can select two points on the moving body, uh, determine the uh, perpendicular bisectors, of the after homologous points a1 a2 a b1 b2 on these perpendicular bisectors select any center point okay any point on that perpendicular bisector a0 b0 then you can design a four bar that's the simplest thing if you want you can take the center point at infinity that will result with a slider Next, we said, okay, we, let us invert the motion. You see, in this case, for each selection of a center point, circle point, we have three parameters. We are free to select the circle point in the first case. That requires two parameters. And then we are free to select the center point on the corresponding perpendicular bisector. That requires one parameter. Each circle point, center point selection requires three parameters. Three for the circle point. If you select circle point first, you, you have two parameters for that. And then you have one parameter for the center point. If you invert the motion, now you have two parameters that you, you can use for the center point. And then the circle point will have only one parameter because it will be on the a perpendicular bisector uh, of a zero of the homologous points a zero and a zero prime, uh, because it is the inverse motion. So center point has a, a circle point in the inverse motion has one parameter to, uh, that you can select. Then uh we discussed the relative motion between two bodies we have the relative pole and we showed how, uh, how to design a six link mechanism i uh, today what well, i will start with in solving a, a, a six link mechanism uh, before i go on to the next topic uh, which is three positions of a moving plane what i will do is this is one of the homeworks that some of you have solved. Uh, the declining chair with a footrest. I didn't share discuss the reclining portion, but usually uh, the, the, the footrest, uh, well, it can be on, on any chair uh, if you like, uh, but usually the footrest is with a reclining chair so that you can lie down on a chair, uh, on, on that coach. Now, what is given to you is, in this case, A0 is given, the position of the uh, footrest in the first and second positions are given, and you are given A0, A1, A1, B1, A, uh, B1. It is given uh, dimensions. You are asked to design a six link mechanism uh, satisfying 
moving the strategic body, this footrest from the first position to the second. You see, you can try a four bar mechanism to do this task, but uh, you will not be successful because uh, you can only have joints, fixed joints underneath the chair in this region, in this yellow region, uh, sorry, green region, uh, region, and you can only have moving pivots on the footrest in this region. So it is limited. So what I will do first, I was thinking first uh, that I should, uh, you know, uh, draw these given dimensions uh, initially, but uh, I, I changed my mind. It will take some time, but I, I want you to see how we can do these things originally. I'll take my origin at this point, the uh, end of the chain, the bottom portion like this over here, because the dimensions are given accordingly. So I will say A0, please check the figure, A-0 is equal to, as you can see, 196 and 10. That's where A0 is located. Of course, I have to reduce the size of my one hundred ninety six ten right over here. Away, I'll increase my shape. Here is A0. Now, the tip of the uh, footrest, I'll call it P1 in the first position, is equal to, right this point, is given as 90 minus 15. Sorry, I had to, I forgot the comma. That's where P1 is. Q1, notice the other end of the uh, footrest, I will call Q-1 is equal to P-1 plus opera parentheses, it is at a distance 200 units below 200, making an angle 10 degrees with respect to the vertical line. 270 plus 10 is, I can either say 280 degrees or minus 80 degrees. Can I ever see that? So let me write minus 80 degrees. Here it is. So the first position of my footrest is this line. Is that agree? The second position, let me increase the size, P2 is equal to <clears throat> 75, 0. Can everyone see that? Please ask questions. If you don't understand, please ask questions. Either in here, send me an email, uh, come to my room, please ask questions. If you don't understand anything, please ask. That's very important. That's where P2 is. Q-2 is equal to P-2 plus open up parentheses, 200 units, which is a rigid body, making an angle 10 degrees 
with respect to the horizontal, but in the negative direction. So, comma, uh, semicolon, 190 degrees. I could as well say I've said minus 170 degrees. Is that it? That is Q2. Oh, one second. I think I must have something wrong. What happened? I think I, okay, I re retype it. Oh, sorry, uh, I don't know what happened, but I'll retype it. P dash two. Oh, 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 I know what I, my mistake is equal to minus 75, comma zero. Q dash two is equal to, uh, sorry, P dash dash two plus 200 semicolon 190 degrees. Yes, that's correct. This is the second position of the moon already. Let me increase, oh, sorry. Now, B1 is located 35 units below the Q or P1, and it is 35 units, this is the rigid body, so it's 35 units from P2. So, let me do it like this. I can do it other way as well. Okay, let me show it in two different ways. I can do it like this. From P1, Draw a line, draw a, draw a circle of 35 units, determine the intersection, sorry. That is going to be a B1. Okay, or I'm going to show it in a different way. B2, I could, I could have drawn from P2 a, a circle of 35 units to the, uh, and then determine the intersection as well. But instead of that, what I will do is B-2 is equal to P-2. Sorry. Plus. 35 semicolon 190 degrees. It will be the same thing. Is that agree? I'm going to determine that, that. Okay. Next, A0, A1, and A1, B1 is given as 170 units. So what I will do is, I will draw a circle of radius 170, and I will draw another circle from B1 of radius 170. Would I have taken these units, these lengths differently? Of course, you are free to select it, but uh, just for the hell of it, I gave it those dimensions as well. That is point a1 behind this 
I'm not going to hide that because I'm going to draw a circle of 170 units from B2. The point of intersection is going to give me A dash two. Now I can erase these, not erase, sorry, hide them. This is the first position of that dyad, two links. First position. This is the second position. Now what I have done is I have uh, drawn the given dimensions. I haven't done anything uh, new. I, these are given. Okay. I can draw a rectangle uh, to show the you know this. Uh, you know, footrest, but I don't need that because this two this line, two points, defines that plane, that footrest, that rigid body. So uh, if I want to use a point over here like this, yes, fine. Okay? The physical dimensions, I'm not interested. I'm interested at the joints. Now, the way it is, this mechanism, this uh, system is of three degrees of freedom. I can attach a, 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 a motor or, uh, at A0, at this level of joint, at A1, and, and B1, and I can move this body from this position to that position. But I want to reduce the degree of freedom to one. Okay, I want to have a controllable motion, constrained motion. Uh, what I can do is I can create a folding loop uh, between uh, this link, this link, uh, and in uh, this link and uh, another link that I, I will attach. What I can do is I can look at the motion of QP, which is the footrest, relative to this crank, A0A. In order to do that, I have to subtract the motion of the crank from that of footrest. Now, what I will do is, first of all, I will determine the angle A0, A makes when moved from the first to the second position. It is alpha 70, 1.86 degrees. If you look at it, it is a clockwise motion from A1, A0 to A1, A2, A0, A2. It is a clockwise motion. Now what I will do is I will move everything. I will subtract the motion of the crank from that of the footrest. So what I will do is I will rotate the footrest about A0 by an angle minus alpha. Minus alpha means counterclockwise because alpha is, this angle is clockwise. From A1 to A2, you are rotating clockwise. Now I'm going to rotate counterclockwise, uh, uh, clockwise to move Q2, P2 to a uh, position relative to the crank, when the crank is fixed at the first position. Is that agree? Can I do it? Uh, can I move Q1, Q1 to the second position? Yes, in that case you will uh, design in the second position. Doesn't make any difference because you can number these what I call one, you can call two. What I call two, you can call one. These are two positions. Calling a position as one or two is up to you, okay? Uh, 
I am telling you that this is the first position, this is the second position, but somebody else can tell you that this is the, uh, what I call as two is, the, is one. No problem. Is that agreed? You can do the same thing as well uh, by, by changing the numbers. Now, I'm going to rotate QP, Q2P2, from this second position uh, about A0 by an angle alpha in counterclockwise direction. This is how I do it. Rotate this rigid body about A0 by an angle alpha in counterclockwise direction. This is rename it as P prime dash Q This is rename it as Q prime dash two, dash two. Let me repeat. If you were sitting on the uh, crank A zero A, you would see the motion of the footrest moved from this first position P one Q one to this new position P two Q two. P2 prime, Q2 prime. If you were sitting on the uh, on this crank, A0, A. Now, what I will do is I will select a point on the footrest. I can select it anywhere I like, but uh, for design considerations, I will select along PQ. So in order to do that, and in order to make it to, to search for different solutions, I will select a distance A, which can be from zero to 200. Increments, I don't need to be uh, too straight like that. And then, Let me take it over here like this. Uh, okay, I'll do it uh, this time. I'll do it uh, differently for this case, and I will do it differently for the for the other case. C one, I will say C one dash one is equal to P dash one plus open up parentheses, A semicolon minus 80 degrees. Oh, I think I, I did. C dash one is equal to P dash one plus A semicolon minus eighty degrees. Yes. Now C prime dash two is equal to O. Uh, yes, I think I know, but no, uh, in, the, in this case, I will do it like this. This will be simpler. I can do it the other way, but I, I, this will be simpler in this uh, case. From P2 prime, draw a circle of radius A. This point of intersection. will be C prime dash 
Two. Let me show the location of C2 over here as well. Uh, again, I'll use circle. We name it as C dash two. Okay. Now, what I will do is I will draw the perpendicular bisector. This is the motion from P one C Q one to P two prime Q two prime is the motion of the footrest relative to the tank. Now, what I can do is, according to Chaltrian, I will draw the perpendicular bisector to C2, C1, correct? Now, I can, I can move this back and forth, by the way. I can find different solutions. And then, I will not add a, a, a new slide. I can select a point D over here, D1, I would call it. Over here like this. First of all, I will have my crank a three link, a three joint element, my ternary link. And then I will have in the first position, it will be like this. I don't have to be concerned with this say, in the in the set motion. Now, when the body is rotated, uh, D2 is rotated to, uh, D1 is rotated to D2. Let us see that. Alpha clockwise. This is the second position. And let us check this R length. You can see it is 184.813. Let us see whether this is, I will call this point, rename it as B2. This length, if we have done it correctly, should be equal to, R should be equal to T. 184.13, R is 184.13. Is that agreed? So it is correct. Now I have a two degree of freedom system. I need, this time I need two motors. One to rotate link A0 A. Two, to rotate, either I will attach a, a motor to at A2 or D2, doesn't matter. I will rotate this holding uh, group to the second position. There we a an electric motor over here and over here will do. 
Now I have to reduce the degree of freedom by one. I have to relate the angular rotation of CD or ABA with that of A0A. In order to do that, I can either select a point on D1C1, or I can select a point on A1B1. Uh, this is up to you. Let me select a point. The reason I will select A, B would be, it will not be a cross link. It will not cross this other link. So uh, it will be simpler to design uh, usually. So what I do is, I will select another slide. This will be B. Again, I'll take it as starting from, zero is not a good choice, but 10, let me say, uh, 200, that's okay, like this. This time, I will draw a circle from A1 uh, of length B, that's too small. This point I'll call E1. I have to, okay. The same thing I will do for the second position of length B. Determine the intersection. Rename it as E dash two. That's the second position of the point A, E. Now draw the perpendicular bisector to E one, E two. Now I must select E0 on this perpendicular bisector. Let me select a point E0 here. That will be within the region that I have stated. Hide this line. Now I have designed a one degree of freedom mechanism that will possibly move the rigid body from the, first, the, the footrest from the first position to the second. Now, am I sure? No. You must always and always check your result, okay? As you can see, you can make different designs. Like this. You can move this okay and so on. I can hide this. I don't need this, so I will hide that intermediate position relative to the crank. No synthesis problem is complete without the analysis. 
you have to analyze, you have to check your result. Otherwise, you will be in trouble. I don't know what, how I have got this, but let me erase this. So what I will do is, since I have the, my design complete, I will, let me, okay. I will hide this. Okay. Now what I will do is I will animate the mechanism. Uh, this time I'm going to use an angle. I'll call that, call that angle theta, variable angle. Uh, the amount of rotation is 71.86 degrees. It will be zero to 72 degrees, let me say. Okay, theta. What I will do is, first rotate, crank about A0 by an angle theta in clockwise direction. Correct? That's number one. Number two, I will draw a circle. No, sorry, not that. With center E0, passing through E2, correct? And E1, e. I think I have done something wrong. It has to pass through E1. Hocam. Yes, sir. Ee, sanırım E1 yerine A1'a tıkladık bisektörü seçerken. Oh, oh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. So what I will do is this. Uh, and uh, yes. I will delete this bisector, correct? That portion is deleted. So what I will do is, thank you very much. Ah. E1, E2. Yes. Sorry, oh. No, it is correct, I think. You see why, they, why you have to check your results? You may have make a mistake. You may make a mistake. That's always true. So you, uh, if you check it, okay. Now I have ro rotated the crank. Next, I will draw a circle with center E0, passing through E2, E1, correct. And then I will draw a circle with center E. Now, oh, this point is, I will call it, rename it as, this point I'll call it, rename it as E. This point I'll call it 
rename it as D, correct? Labels, I will, oh. Okay. Yeah. I'm erasing some of the labels. Okay. There are too many. Uh, now I will draw another circle. Yes with center A of radius B. Why? Because the distance, oh, yes, that's correct. Because the distance A E2 is of length B. Let me hide this circle. Mm. Hide this circle. This point is going to be point E. This is the first four bar loop. Okay. Now all I have to do is Okay. Like that. I have to determine B2 and, okay, in order to determine B2, you see B2 is along A, A2, A, E, B, in order to determine B, sorry, in general position, B is along A, E, A, E line. So first, I will draw a line, ray, A, E, and this length is, let me see what this length is. Have I drawn it like that or that? I, I'm not sure, but uh, that's why. Let me measure. On the 70 units. Correct? Let me see, C2 is 170 units, but it is written, the label is L. This label is L, so. Yes, that's correct, 170 units. So, all I will do is draw a circle from E of length L. The intersection is going to give me B, correct? That's B. This length D C2 is either F, R, or F, R, R or T, if, as you can see. R, 197.81 units, or T, where's T? Hmm. 
इति कृतानि चाहिए आदि सदगाय आह यस आनंद नाच सेवन पॉइंट एट वाइंस एस यू कैन सी सो व्हाट आई विल डू इज आई विल ड्रॉ अ सर्कल From D of radius R or T, and from B, can somebody tell me what will be the radius? Okay, let me see. A minus thirty-five units. Why thirty-five? Because the distance. Uh, from P to uh, on, I'm sorry, uh, yes, from uh, P. Uh, the, I have measured A uh, from uh, point P. The distance from uh, point P to A uh, is thirty-five uh, units. Is that right? The distance B C A I have measured from P. P C distance is A, correct? P B distance, so P B uh, distance is thirty-five units. So I have to subtract that. I'll check it for you later. Okay. This is B. This is C. Now, first of all, I will draw a line like this. First, I will draw a circle from B. Of thirty-five units, I'll this point. I'll call. I have to call P, and from P. I'll measure. I'll draw a circle of two hundred units. That point I'll call Q. Okay, and then I'll draw this line. Okay. Now, usually, what I do is <coughs> after I have completed this. Make it more of a page. Now, as far as this goes, make it red. Make it colorful. Okay. 
You can also decrease the thickness. to make it more visible. Okay, now, this is a one degree of freedom mechanism that will move your rigid body from the first to the second position. Any questions? You have plenty of free parameters, by the way. You can, as you can see, you can move, select this point. Although I have restricted most of the parameters, Okay, you can change the location of E. Okay, you are able to satisfy your requirements and you are able to move. The other problems, uh, I, I think I have uh, uh, three set, sets of problems. All of them, uh, has, you can do it in a similar fashion. I mean, uh, I don't have to solve the others. If you, have, if you have any questions, please say so. Okay. If not, um, I'll... Yeah. Yes, sir. In the second uh, question of the homework, uh, which is uh, want us from want from us to uh, want a slider crank, which is uh, goes left to right uh, 50 millimeters. In this problem, uh, when we solve it, uh, with first uh, uh, method, first method, uh, with first method, uh, there is a problem, I think, uh, or, or I cannot do it with the first method. Will you please send me an email? Uh, I, will, I will try to answer from you uh, because uh, right now I, I don't think I'll be able to answer that question right away. Uh, no send problem. me an email, I'll, I'll, I'll reply to you, okay? Okay, okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay, I'm going to save this and post it. Okay.